What's good ladies and gentlemen, my name is Zether and in today's video we will be covering how the events of the Naruto story would play out if Naruto joined the Akatsuki. Now, if you simply want to get into the meat and potatoes of the video, then go to the timestamp up on screen. In case you guys want to hear about the giveaway which I'm going to be talking about right now, then you can stick around. Now, after hearing giveaway, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are like, yo, giveaway, giveaway, what, how, what, giveaway? What are you giving away, Zether? Well, let me explain. I'm actually just going to be giving away something not too crazy, but it's actually pretty cool. It's a Bakugo statue. Now, it's really sick. You can put it on your setup. You can just have it as your, in, in your room as like something cool that you can look at every now and then. It's a pretty cool statue up on screen in case you guys want to see what it looks like. That is it. And it's honestly pretty cool. And the only thing you have to do to enter the giveaway is leave a like on today's video, turn on post notifications, as well as subscribe to the channel and comment hashtag giveaway in the comment section down below. Also, guys, today's like goal will be 1,000 likes. And as soon as you guys smash the like goal of 1,000 likes, I'm going to be dropping the next What If Naruto movie series that I have made in, in the works. So the sooner you guys smash it, the sooner you guys are going to be getting another What If Naruto movie. That being said, today's video was help made by my boy Harry Fox. This man and me were on the phone on VC for like two hours straight, just throwing ideas back and forth for what if Naruto joined the Akatsuki, the movie. And he ended up helping out quite a bit with um, a couple of situations that happened in the video. So definitely go make sure to check out his channel. Link will be down below in the description. And with that said, I hope you guys go on to enjoy the video. Hey Ross, sauce it up. Like with any Naruto story, we begin this all off on the day of the Nine Tails incident. Just like in the original story, Minato would still end up sacrificing his life by using the Grim Reaper Death Seal to pretty much place the Nine Tails within Naruto. From here, this is where a, star, a story sorry, truly commences. We begin with a young Naruto about the age of four years old. Four years old, mind you. This Naruto is literally four years old. And just at this point, he rules in to just let Naruto know that he's going to be going off to live on his own, giving Naruto his own apartment, his own food, some noodles. And yeah, that's pretty much all Naruto got. From here, Naruto would decide that, I mean, there's nothing he can truly do about it. If this is what Hiruzen wanted, then this is what's going to happen. So from here, Naruto would go over to his bed as he would lay down and sink his head into his pillow. Tears would start flooding out thinking, why am I living by myself? He would then begin to ask himself where his parents are, questioning who they even were, why he never got to meet them, and why his life is like this. He would begin to question to himself, why me? It's from here, Naruto would get up and think, no, I, I, I can't think like this. From here, he would get up and a baby Naruto, not baby, but you know, a kid Naruto, would begin to essentially put on his clothes and wander the streets of Konoha. From here, Naruto would begin walking across the streets and everything would be fine. At this point, Danzo still hasn't told everybody about the fact that Naruto is the Nine Tails in Cherokee. So Naruto was walking through a couple of shops when out of nowhere, Naruto ends up smelling some incredibly good food. From here, Naruto ends up entering some random place that sells, let's say, kebabs, all right? And he would go over there as he would say, oh my God, that just looks so good. The man would tell him, oh, this is how much it costs. And Naruto would begin slowly walking away saying, I don't have any money. From here, Naruto would begin walking off as the man would say, here, take one. As he would give him the smallest thing he could possibly give him, like a small kebab with like a piece of meat and like vegetables and another piece of meat or something like that. I don't know. From here, Naruto would pretty much grab the thing, give the man a bright big smile and say thank you so much as he would begin to walk off with the eating it as his stomach, uh, you know, as his hunger would slowly start going away. From here, Naruto would think that maybe everything's going to be okay. He would begin wandering off until eventually 
Naruto would see a young girl with white eyes and black hair getting picked on by a bunch of little kids. Naruto would be like, what? And from here, Naruto would run up over there saying, hey, leave her alone. From here, the bullies would look at Naruto and say, and what are you going to do about it? Naruto would look at those young kids as he would then basically fight them off beating them up and getting beat up in the process. He would get a beaten up eye and all of this stuff and ask Hinata if she's okay. Immediately, Hinata's face would turn red and she would immediately be taken by a Hyuga member. From here, what would end up happening is Naruto would just look down at the ground as blood would begin to hit the snow that is falling and Naruto would make his way back to his house. From here, Naruto would get inside and using his first aid kit would begin to pretty much mend his wounds. When Naruto was inside, he would think that he's pretty hungry. <laughs> uh, sorry, but I'm not even going to edit that out. Anyways, Naruto would think he's hungry and he would proceed to pretty much pour some hot water inside of a bowl of inside of some instant ramen noodles and he would begin chowing down. From here, Naruto would end up having a couple of bites and it is at this moment that Naruto would pretty much be sitting at his table. From here, Naruto would proceed to quite literally just, just think as he would begin to just wonder and ponder to himself what he's going to do tomorrow. From here, Naruto would look outside the window and would see a bunch of shinobi walking past as Naruto would think, that's it, I'm going to become a shinobi, I'm going to become the Hokage of the village and then, and then everybody will have to respect me. From here, Naruto would start doing push-ups, sit-ups crunches, pretty much anything that a little kid can do, but not really that good at it because, mind you, Naruto is a kid. Even though he lives in a literal ninja society, he still is four years old. And from here, two months would go by of Naruto living a semi-normal life. Most of the time, he remained in his house, but the times that he did go outside, he wasn't ever looked at as a beast or a monster. People kind of didn't pay any real attention to him, but now, now when Naruto wanders the village, he gets stares, he gets told that he's hated by the villagers and even the same man that a while ago ended up giving him a free kebab ended up pretty much telling him that he's not welcome there anymore. Naruto from here on out literally lost everything. One day however, Naruto would be wandering through the village when out of nowhere he would stumble across a ramen shop. Now when Naruto sees that, having a couple of extra dollars in his pocket would think I want some. As he would walk inside, he would take a seat and immediately he would literally get pushed off of it by Ichiraku or Te Teuchi himself. As from here, Naruto would hit the ground and he would say, get out of here, Nine Tails brat. You're not allowed here. Naruto would just proceed to say, but I have money as the man would walk over towards Naruto and kick him right on the side of the stomach causing Naruto to gasp for air and then slowly get himself up as he begins running home. From here, a bunch of other shop owners would say, yeah, Ninetales brat. They would begin throwing things at Naruto's direction and Naruto would end up catching an apple as he begins running off with it, eating it while he does. At this point, Naruto would be inside of his home thinking, why does everybody hate me? Wiping tears off of his face. From here, Naruto would say that it doesn't matter as he would begin to slowly just pass out and the next morning naruto would end up pretty much just going to school where he would end up meeting a bunch of his classmates now his classmates they they don't even talk to him naruto doesn't even have any friends in the original story of naruto shikamaru and choji were the two people who really didn't care whether naruto was called a nine tails brat and still hung out with him regardless of the fact but in this version their parents ended up instilling different mentalities into them telling them to stay away from him not exactly to be mean to him but just to stay away and this time they would do so so naruto in this version literally has no friends he has nobody he can run to nobody he can tell anything to and even in the original he didn't even have that because shikamaru and choji well yes they didn't ignore him they also wouldn't be considered friends in my eyes because friends wouldn't um, exactly do the things that ended up happening in naruto the original story so i'm going to be saying 
that from here what ends up essentially going down is Naruto just sits on the swing and it's at this moment that Naruto would realize just how truly alone he is as at this point Naruto would begin walking home and he would make his way towards his home and months of this would slowly go by until at this point Naruto is let's say seven years old Naruto would be seven years old and after literally three years of being treated like nothing but garbage and scum having little to any human interaction Naruto would be a skinny frail kid with sunken in eyes lack of sleep lack of motivation Naruto stopped doing anything at all for a while no more push-ups no more sit-ups he just sits in his solid solitude and Naruto came to find out that he might as well stay inside of his home because out there it's too dangerous for somebody like him and so from here what would end up going down as Naruto would sink his head into the pillow just like he does every night and cry. But on this particular night, he would have run out of tears. Naruto can't cry anymore. There's no more tears left. Naruto would get up and from here, he would take a seat on his table as he would see that there's only one little bit of food left for the month. Even though there's two weeks left, Naruto would grab the cup of noodles, heat it up with a bit of water, and this is when the electricity would cut out, as a thunderstorm would actually be going on outside, and the rain would begin pouring in his balcony. Naruto would go and look over, as he would begin to close the doors, to basically stop the water from falling in, but it is at this point that a, th that a lightning strike would hit down at the ground, as out of nowhere, Naruto would look up and hear a voice saying, Naruto. From here, Naruto would look at the direction as he would see a man with a mask, an orange mask and a strange robe with clouds on it, red clouds and white outlines. From here, Naruto would say, uh, uh, what are you doing here? Actually, take that back. Naruto would look at the man ex with no expression, simply thinking he's probably here to kill me. But from here, Naruto would just say, if you're going to kill me, just do it. As he would just like literally put his head down, close his eyes as he wants to cry. But there are no more tears left in that boy's body. As at this point, Obito would stand up and he would think, this boy, he truly is in a sorrowful state. Thinking about the village that he once grew up in and how even he, being an Uchiha member, was slightly put down thinking about the pain that naruto has gone through he would smile as he would think this is perfect and from here naruto would look at obito's direction as obito would begin saying don't worry kid i'm not here to hurt you from here naruto would say yeah right because at this point he would simply begin to sit back down at the table and eat his ramen as this ramen is literally spoiled from here, Obito would take a seat at the table with the only other chair that there was, and it would literally break. The leg would break, but Obito would fall back as Naruto would look at this and wouldn't even laugh. At this point, Obito would look up at Naruto and say, So, looks like you've lived a pretty pathetic, worthless life. How about I help you? I can help you become powerful. I can help you become somebody who this village will respect. I can change you, Naruto. Naruto would look at the man as he would say, how do you expect to do that? Look at me. He would literally hold out both of his arms and they are so skinny and frail as the man would look at Naruto and think, this boy truly doesn't know of the power that rests inside of him. Obito would say, if you come with me, I promise, there will be no second thoughts. You'll have a better life. You'll have food in your stomach every day. And I can help you take revenge on those who have done you wrong. As soon as Naruto hears this, he would think, Revenge? 
he would close his eyes and think about all those people who have done him wrong in his life. He would think about Kiruzin, the man who once raised him, taught him the alphabet, taught him how to read, and gave him food three times a day, and slightly showed a little glimmer of care for him. Eventually, stopped even giving him money for rent. It became less and less every month. Naruto was neglected by every single person around him. Naruto truly has nobody he can depend on. It's as if Naruto lived in a world where he was the sole survivor. From here, Obito would begin to pretty much warp away as he would say, the choice is yours. And from here, Naruto would be left alone in the dark. From here, Naruto the next day would wake up and ponder this decision all day, wondering to himself if it truly is correct to get revenge on all of these people. He would walk across the village as if to this point that Naruto would stumble weakly as he sees a very cool mask. At this point, Naruto would grab it and begin looking at it as the as the store owner would be like, here, grab the mask. It's already tainted by your hands anyways. Throwing it at Naruto's face, causing him to fall down on the ground and literally like scratch his elbows as he would think. He would get up, grab the mask, put it on, and begin walking through the village. And it's at this point that Naruto would cross down a really, like, creepy alleyway. Because out of nowhere, three villagers would start laughing. As they would begin to quite literally grab onto Naruto and hold him onto the wall. As it's at this point that they would begin punching him repeatedly at the side of his ribs. Naruto would begin coughing out blood, thinking... <laughs> As he just coughs and coughs and coughs and these villagers would not stop until out of nowhere a man would appear and kill all three of them. This man would be Obito and from here Naruto would look up at the man as he would say have you made your choice? Naruto would look down at the ground as for the first time the influence of the nine tails would take over. Naruto's wounds would begin healing his eyes would go an ominous crimson like color and he would look up at Naruto as he would say, I'll kill them all. From here, Obito would extend his hand out to Naruto as Naruto would hold on to it. And out of nowhere, they would both warp gate out of there. As the last thing that Naruto would ever see is the blood dripping from one of those men's like bodies onto the floor. Naruto would then arrive inside of a cave as Obito would say, Welcome to the Akatsuki as at this point, he would grab a Hidden Leaf Village uh, headband and he would then shove a kunai into it as he would create the dash, Naruto would put it around his neck as at this point Obito would say, we'll begin tomorrow, for now, eat up. As out of nowhere, Naruto would be taken to a room, a slightly dark room with lights inside and a fridge. Now this fridge would have all the food that Naruto could ever hope for. And Naruto looking inside would finally begin to have a proper meal in the first time in months. Because at this point, Naruto, his hatred would just grow every single day thinking, this man that I don't even know who it is, is treating me better than the Hokage of the village. As tears would begin running down Naruto's face, he would think that that was the last chance that the leaf had. He was not going to go with the man. He was going to deal with the pain. It's not as if they ever tried like killing him or anything. But now, now they did. And Naruto's going to make them all pay. He's going to make them all suffer for having him live under those conditions for all those years. Naruto's going to kill them all. Kill them all. Naruto would hear voices in his head as they would say, kill them all. And from here... Naruto would proceed to simply sit there in silence, eating his meal, as the next day, Naruto would wake up. From here, Obito would toss Naruto a pill as he would say, eat up. It's going to be horrible, but you need it. Your body needs that subs substance for now. From here, Naruto would eat the pill as, you know, out of nowhere, Naruto would feel his body slowly be filled up with like 
with this feeling of just like like have you guys ever seen baki uh when baki was turned like skelet skeletal like and then he drank like sugar water and all of his muscles like got huge well think about it kind of like that obito just gave naruto a pill which pretty much rejuvenated his body and caused all of naruto's sunken in like features to slowly start growing in mass naruto's body would return to that of a proper seven year old and from here obito would say that for a week he's going to be needing to take those in order to keep his body up to co as from here obito would then begin teaching naruto the basics of chakra control this would go on for about five months until naruto would then understand the basics of chakra control water walking tree walking uh forming basic jutsus like the shadow clone training with obito caused naruto to end up slowly learning about chakra control and obito would have found a way around the nine tails abilities and so from here years would go by as naruto would learn more and more jutsus by the age of naruto being 13 years old naruto would have mastered all five chakra natures with the help of other akatsuki members who were like a family to naruto they were like essentially brothers to naruto brothers and sisters including Kona because they were the only people who've ever been there for Naruto so Naruto sees the Akatsuki as a sort of family he wants to prove himself to them Naruto not only has the abilities that I've stated so far but he also has semi control over the nine tails abilities he has access to two of the nine tails tails and from here Naruto would simply just be there with his cloak till eventually obito arrives and would say naruto you need to prove yourself from here naruto would just look at obito's direction as he would say how exactly you plan on how exactly do you plan on having me do that from here obito would say that he needs to prove himself by infiltrating the hidden leaf village and naruto's eyes would widen thinking in the village from here a bunch of flashbacks of how naruto's life was like before joining the akatsuki would hit naruto and naruto's anger would boil up as his eyes would change color and he would slam his fist into the ground saying that damn village is it time obito obito would put his hand out as he would put it on his naruto's shoulder and say not quite not quite he would say you still need more training and from here, Naruto would get angry as he would say, as if. As from this point, Naruto would proceed to, um, what's it called? Naruto would proceed to pretty much get his hair dyed. Yep, his hair is going to literally get dyed into a black color. He changes his hairstyle. He's going to be wearing a black hoodie and he is going to be sent in by himself as a one-man team for the tuning exams now naruto would pretty much be told that his job is going to be to pretty much infiltrate because they're going to be helping out with the assassination of hiruzen as naruto's eyes would widen and he would think may not be the village but it's pretty damn close as he would be excited his blood would begin to boil and he would begin to get ready for the assassination of Hiruzen, the third Hokage. Immediately following the events of Naruto being told that he was going to be on a mission to assassinate Hiruzen alongside Orochimaru, what would end up going down after this is Naruto would pretty much be informed of what the essential plan is. Naruto was essentially going to be going into the tuning exams and he's going to be pretty much trying not to stand out too much, but also at the same time prove his power. He's just kind of going to be somebody or a figure that Orochimaru is going to be having for him just to kind of have a little bit of extra help sent from the Akatsuki themselves. Now, normally the Akatsuki would not work with Orochimaru, but since Orochimaru quite literally is going to obliterate the Leaf Village, Obito thinks it's wise to take out one of the only people who poses a threat to him as um, 
in terms of the Akatsuki and the one village that he thinks could genuinely pose a threat because they have, you know, Kakashi. They have a, a lot of strong ninjas and stuff like that. So Obito was like, you know what? We might as well destroy the Hidden Leaf Village. So essentially, what would end up happening is Naruto would be brief, told to stand out, but not too much. Also told not to reveal his evil intentions, kind of to play out a personality where he's more nonchalant and like more like of a badass, I guess you could say. After uh, Obito briefing Naruto of these details, Naruto would say, so that's what you want out of me? With Obito saying, exactly. After this, Naruto would say, that's just fine then. Might as well start getting the preparations ready. Naruto would then proceed to dye his hair fully black, as at this point, he would then change his hairstyle and get a haircut by Conan. Yeah, Conan, she would proceed to cut Naruto's hair, being like, whoa, you look pretty good today. Naruto would be like, shh, quiet, it's not about whether, whether I look good or not. Conan would smile as she would tell him, well, you might as well show a little bit of gratitude. I've been doing your hair ever since you were a little boy. Remember that. If anybody here gets the title of calling themselves a motherly figure to you, it's me. As Naruto would say, you're the only woman in the Akatsuki, Konan. No duh, you're the only one. She would immediately smack Naruto on the top of the head and say, yeah, you better, you, you, you best believe I am. As from here, she would proceed to say, here's your new look. Naruto would look at himself in the mirror thinking, honestly, it's not half bad. And if I'm being genuinely honest, Naruto hates the village, but it's not like his whole personality revolves around hating the village, you know what I mean? Naruto did learn to chill out in terms of personality. He is a little bit of a bloodlusted person who loves the thrill of a battle, just simply due to the fact that he's always been uh, growing up around powerful shinobis, such as, you know, Itachi, Kisame, Deidara, Sasori, things of that level. So... Naruto, during these years, definitely did end up getting trained pretty, pretty damn well. He would actually have been taught a couple of jutsus that Madara himself used, such as the Majestic Destroyer Flame Jutsu. Naruto would have definitely been taught, taught the Multi-Shadow Clone Jutsu. And Naruto would also be taught a bunch of high-level Chakra Jutsus. Like, things that, uh, like, you need an immense amount of Chakra to use. That being said though, Naruto at this point would pretty much just be told that he needs to be on his way pretty soon. Naruto would toss a hoodie on and from here, he would begin to make his way towards the Hidden Leaf Village. At the same time, the Team 7 mission of the water the water and the, the, the Land of the Waves mission would have still gone down and it would have ended up being a success due to completely different reasons than what ended up happening in the original. This time, <clears throat> they were actually able to outwit their opponent because of an inclusion of another character. This person, Sai. Now, many of you guys might be like, Sai's on Team 7? Well, yeah, Danzo would end up pretty much having Sai join Team 7 since there would be no Naruto to join the team. So Sai ends up replacing Naruto, and when Team 7 is pretty much on their way back to the Leaf Village, Naruto would have actually been very, very close to the Hidden Leaf Village gates. Now, when Naruto would turn his attention towards Team 7, Naruto would notice the headbands and think, so... It's about time that I get this persona going. He would start looking down as he walks, and at this point, he would proceed to get closer and closer to Team 7. As he inches closer, Naruto would grab a kunai and begin gripping it as tight as he possibly could, to the point where he would actually indent the metal. And you guys might be like, why is he this angry? Well, he's actually looking at Sakura. Now, Naruto has a couple of memories of Sakura pretty much being like not the nicest person to him as a kid <gasps> now obviously she wasn't as bad as like other people were but sakura would call him names say that he was annoying say that he was nothing but a little orphan and it would cause naruto's blood to start boiling because naruto would begin getting like uh flashbacks of all of these moments that like haunted him in his sleep for the past five years and so Naruto was just kind of like, get out of my head, you know what I mean? Like, trying not to focus too much on this. By the way, I'm not sure if it was, wait, 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 what, what age did I even say Naruto got taken by the Akatsuki? I completely forgot. Just know, Naruto at this point is going to be 14 years old, all right? 14 years old Naruto, and uh, yeah. So, with that said, what ends up actually happening is... Naruto, when Team 7 is getting closer, his bloodlust would start to seep out a bit, and Kakashi would pretty much get on guard saying, wait, as they would continue getting closer to this figure, Kakashi would say, what are you doing here? 
Naruto would take off his hoodie and say, I'm here for the Chunin exams. What about yourselves? He would then look at the, uh, the, the headbands and be like, oh, you hidden Leaf Village members. That's cool. He would proceed to say, are these your students? As he would look at Kakashi, and Kakashi would say, yeah, Team 7. Naruto would say, well, I, well I better, you better hope that you train them well enough, because if not, they're going to lose their lives in this exam. Hope you tell them about that. As from here, he would walk inside the village as Team 7 is like, what was he talking about? And from here, Kakashi would pretty much be forced to explain what the Chunin exams was, as he would tell them that he was actually going to recommend them when they returned back anyways. So Kakashi would ask the team, do you guys want to participate in the Chunin exams? And from here, the entire team would say yes, except for Sakura, who's like, um, uh, I mean, if Sasuke wants to, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much how that goes down. And then when it comes to Naruto walking into the village gate, he would end up showing a paper which pretty much authorizes his entry into the village, and the guards would be like, all right, they would say, what's your name? Naruto would smile as he would say, the name's Menma. And they would say, well, that works for me. He would proceed to walk into the village gates as they would inform him to meet with Hiruzen, since right now they're currently accepting limited admissions for the Chunin exams. Naruto would say, that works perfectly, as he would proceed to pretty much walk by, and Naruto never did have any encounters with those village members, and Obito told him to keep calm down his bloodless when he's in the village, so Naruto would feel like bloodless when he's walking through the village. Like, imagine you're just forced to be in a place where you hate everyone there, like, you just don't like anybody, you know what I mean? Like, you're you're stuck in a room with your worst enemy. Just imagine that. The whole time you would be wanting not, you, you'd be struggling not to go beat them up, you know what I mean? And that's pretty much what Naruto is feeling right now. At this current moment, Naruto is pretty much just like trying to block out the negative thoughts. And he's pretty much fantasizing, obliterating the village right now as things stand. But he would then think, Obito said not to. It's not quite the time. From here, he would say, fine, as he would calm down and as he would turn a corner to get closer and closer to the, uh, the Hokage's office, he would see that there would be a man there with purple paint on his face and a large, uh, large shaped backpack on him. Naruto seeing this would say, huh? As he would walk past uh, slowly, he would then look at the eyes of Kanahamaru. Now, keep in mind, Naruto has no idea who Kanahamaru was. He didn't even know who he was until Naruto ended up asking for, uh, like, to become a ninja later on in the story. So clearly, Naruto would not know who Kanahamaru is in this version. And what ends up happening here is Kanahamaru gives him these eyes of like, "Help me." Naruto, seeing this expression from Kanahamaru, would think, "That's that's the same look I used to give people when nobody helped me." Naruto would slowly begin walking away as he would say can't do it he would blitz back behind Kanaha, uh conqueror and say put the kid down or i'll gut you like a fish as from here K uh conqueror would begin like going into a, a hysterical laughter saying you <laughs> that's the lamest insult i've ever heard naruto would press the kunai to his neck as conqueror would say all right all right i'll drop the kid he would let kanahamaru go as he would land on the ground and begin coughing going <coughs> Thank you. From here, Naruto would feel as some of the blood from his neck would start dripping down, and Naruto would say, Fun, you can go. So from here, Conqueror would take two steps back and say, say, I'll get you back for that next time. He would end up walking away as Naruto would meet eyes with Gara before he used his sand to pretty much drift away with the air. Naruto would look at him and both simultaneously understand that person is powerful. So Naruto, after doing this, would end up being like, all right. He would walk over towards the kid saying, you all right? As Kanahamaru would say, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. My grandpa sure is going to be thankful for you for helping me. As Naruto would say, grandpa, what are you talking about, kid? Kanahamaru would say, oh, you don't know? The, the third Hokage. And as Naruto hears these words, Naruto's eyes would widen as he would kick Kanahamaru straight in the stomach, sending him flying into a wall, which he would break and then proceed to just leave him there as Kanahamaru was completely knocked up. He would forget what happened when he wakes up and Naruto would continue making his way towards the Hokage's office. Here is where Naruto would think, I can't believe I just helped the, the grandson of that Kage. I should have let him die. Heck, I should have joined in with the fun. 
as Naruto would be walking away, he would think, the kid has nothing to do with it, but to make Kirazin suffer, I don't care who does and doesn't have anything to do with my problems. From here, Naruto would make his way towards the office as he would see one of Firuzin's like helpers, like secretaries almost, and and they would be like, oh, the third Kwagi could meet you now. Naruto would say, this damn bastard really thinks that he gets to tell me when he can and can't meet me. As after this, Naruto would say, well, it's whatever. He would begin making his way up as every step that Naruto would take, Naruto would just kind of be psyching himself up to stand there and not try to kill Hiruzen at first sight. And Naruto would pretty much be having to use all 110% of his willpower to not want to attack Hiruzen, you know what I mean? But when he finally walks inside, he would see Hiruzen as Hiruzen would say, oh, state your name. Naruto would say the name is Menma, Menma Uzumaki. And when Hiruzen hears that name, he's like, there's more Uzumakis? Naruto would say, yeah, one of the last survivors. I'm actually part of the, hit the land hidden in the grass. As Hiruzen would say, well, I hope your team does well. Where's the rest of them? Naruto would say, I'm a solo team. My village allowed me to come by myself. Hiruzen would say, well, now we haven't had a solo team ever since the days of the fourth Hokage. As he would say, hope you live up to that. As, you know, Hiruzen would hit his pipe and then proceed to say, well, you can be off now. As Naruto would grit his teeth and say, thanks. From here, Naruto would make his way out of there as Naruto would be in a cold sweat thinking, it took everything I had not to kill that damn fool. As from here, Naruto would be struggling to hide some signs of his bloodlust as he leaves. And two people, two random civilians would pass out from the levels of bloodlust Naruto was emitting. From here, Naruto would calm himself down as he would make his way towards a spot where uh, Chunin Exam's people can kind of like rest, kind of like their temporary housing. Naruto would make it this way and then lay down on the bed as he starts counting down the days until he can finally kill Hiruzen. The days before the Chunin Exam begins is two days, and since nothing remarkable is going to be happening during this time, I'm going to say that Naruto simply ends up going towards the Chunin Exam's tower. When he's on his way, Naruto would be in utter disgust seeing all the shops that are around the area and seeing all the people who, after all these years, are living their best lives after all the things that they did to Naruto. Half of those people should be rotting in jail, but they're not. They're just sitting there happy with their families, enjoying their meals. Naruto would think, the first time I had a good meal was when I joined the Akatsuki, the only family I have. This place, this place is cursed. He would walk towards the Genin Tower as, you know, he would proceed to walk uh, past the Genjutsu that was put up, completely ignoring it, as Team 7 would have their Team 10 encounter where they have to fight against Rock Lee, yada yada yada, but Naruto would make his way towards the exam room as everything would begin. And I'm honestly not really going to be covering this, just know he passes with flying colors because Obito gave him like a cheat sheet or something like that. And Naruto would fill out the answers immediately, passing with flying colors. Uh, proceeding to kind of like slightly make it look like he's taking his time, so he would end up getting second place all time when it comes to the fastest test taker. Uh, beating, uh, I think Itachi, beating Itachi because Minato holds the record for that, I think. I, I don't know. But he beat somebody important, that's for sure. And he would end up after this just kind of staying behind with their like the final question. Naruto would simply stay there as there's no real situation where he's like, believe it, I'm going to become a Hokage. You know, none of that stuff happens. Instead, everybody simply says that they're they're willing to do it. And then Anko comes crashing in from the window saying, all right, maggots, I'm going to need all of you guys to meet me outside. When Naruto hears Konan say this, he's like, well, feisty one. As he walks his way outside, and from here, Naruto would stand as Kaanko gives the rules out, and everybody wouldn't really have any weird Orochimaru encounter or any of that stuff. So, what ends up happening here is Naruto would end up making his way inside of the Chunin uh, exam's forest of death. He begins jumping from treetop to treetop, simply thinking that finally, he gets to let loose and kill some people. 
as from here, Naruto would proceed to essentially take out one of his blades that he has behind him. He would begin running on top of trees as he would end up running into the first team. This would be a team full of hidden leaf ninjas. And when Naruto sees this, he would lick his blade thinking, perfect. Immediately, Naruto would coat his blade with lightning chakra, lightning release, and he would proceed to blitz right at them before cutting the main member's head off. The other two hidden leaf shinobis would be like, no, Don, as you know, they scream out his name and Naruto would immediately cut them both down before they even finished their sentence. Naruto would go through the tuning exams, pretty much killing people, not even taking scrolls, but just being an absolute like nutcase you know what i mean he would end up running past orochimaru as orochimaru would give him like this look of you better play your part and naruto just sees orochimaru as he stays silent and runs past him you know they were running towards different directions orochimaru was going towards team seven naruto was going more towards the center of the of the tower at this point naruto did end up collecting the scrolls that he needed and he would finally end up being in the waiting room for three days before all the other teams that would make it would end up arriving there. Now you guys might be wondering, so what happens to Sasuke? Well, what happens here is Orochimaru was able to implant the curse mark on him and he would then proceed to get out of there. Like uh, Orochimaru would pretty much give Sasuke the curse mark and then like go into the ground. Like he would just start sinking into the ground. <sighs> oh my God. <sighs> <sighs> the yawns they always sneak up on me sorry about that guys but um he would end up pretty much going into the earth and fading away you know what i mean as from here um <clears throat> naruto as i said is just kind of waiting for everything to kind of just go by as quickly as possible and doing this he would end up kind of just being very 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 bored so he would end up deciding that he's just going to be training uh, image training inside of his mind for the next two days he would do this and finally the first event would be announced naruto versus kiba now this fight i would love to say has like this crazy ending or naruto has to use these insane jutsus he doesn't the way that this plays out is as soon as the as the the test proctor would say begin naruto would blitz at kiba's direction elbowing him in the nose causing kiba's sight to be blurry as he would then sweep kick kiba and then proceed to immediately coat his hand in a jutsu so similar to kakashi's uh, chidori that it's scary it's the lightning blade the literal lightning blade now you guys might be like yo where did he get that from i mean obito grew up with kakashi and um you know he definitely would have um, would have been like yo that's, that's an interesting jutsu and since naruto has an affinity for lightning chakra i figured i would just give him something like that not the jidori but it's something very very similar he would pierce it into one of kiba's not vital organs as you know he would take his arm out and then say and then hear the proctor say uh, Menma Uzumaki is the winner. As from here, Naruto would body flicker back to the stands as Rock Lee would be like, wow, that was impressive. It took him only 10 seconds. Not only that, but even though he hurt him, in, he hurt him pretty badly, uh, 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 Kiba will recover. You know, my guy would be like, that's the power of youth, Neji. Ah, ah, ah. Um, 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 y y yeah. Anyways, though, <laughs> what would end up happening after this is the normal matches would go down. Naruto would see Hinata get completely obliterated by Neji. The a couple of Jonin senseis would step in. Hinata would be taken away, and there wouldn't be any moment where Hinata gives Naruto the uh, the ointment because she doesn't know Naruto was there. So that's pretty much what would end up going down here. What happens afterwards is they are all given about one month to essentially train together. <clears throat> And during this month of training, Naruto would actually end up training for about three days before he gets one of his cravings. Now, I will admit, this version of Naruto is a bit of a glutton. So he ends up making his way towards a sweet store where he would actually end up running into a fellow ninja. This person being Anko. Now, when Naruto was in the store, he was pretty much just, just about to pay before, you know, looking into his wallet and seeing, you know, he definitely did have money, but he would see Anko behind him and immediately recognizing her to be a Hidden Leaf Village ninja, he would think, can't blow my cover. 
<sighs> he would grab a kunai in his hand and begin immediately just walking out of the store. As Anko sees this, she would say, hey, wait. And Naruto gripping the kunai would think, does she know? Before Anko would say, if you don't have enough money to pay for those sweets, I can cover you. Naruto would say, what? And from here, Anko would say, come on. She would just like smack Naruto on the back saying, come on, come eat some sweets with me. As Naruto would end up pretty much having his, his food paid for him by a, a hidden leaf village shinobi. And Naruto would be like, yo, like this is the first time somebody from this village has ever shown me kindness. Huh, it's strange. Naruto would eat the sweets with her and Anko would say, you're one of the participants in the shooting exams, right? Naruto would say he is, but that he got there a little late. He was meant to take that test about four years ago. Anko would say, how old are you, kid? Naruto saying, I'm not a kid. I'm 18. Anko would say, oh, so you're barely legal. And Naruto would pretty much just kind of like have a little bit of a smirk on his face. As Anko would say, ah, I'm just joshing you. She would say, look, the tuning exams are going to get even harder from this point forward. But seeing that performance from you... I think you'll become a chunin just fine. Naruto would thank her for the sweets and then he would walk off. Just kind of thinking about Anko for the next couple of days. About let's say three days would go by, Naruto would be training at a forest when all of a sudden another person who he had just seen like not too long ago, Anko would end up actually be walking near that area. When Naruto sees her, he would say, are you just trying to stalk me or something? Like, are you trying to just watch me every t every day? As Anko would say, no, not particularly. I guess you're just really lucky to run into me every day. And Naruto would say, some luck I have. He would be doing one arm handstands and Anko would say, oh, one arm handstands, I see. She would join Naruto and say, how about a little training session? Let's see how well equipped you are to become a Chunin. Naruto would say, I'm down as he and Anko would begin sparring for the next hour. Now, obviously, Naruto wouldn't be showing off his full power because if he did, he would obliterate Anko. I'm just going to say it. He would obliterate Anko. But Naruto doesn't use his full power, so it's semi of an even match. Anko would be extremely impressed with Naruto, and after this, he would end up running into Anko the next day. However, this time... Naruto would have purposefully gone to the glutton store just because, not, not the glutton store, but the candy store just because of the of a whim of wanting to run into Anko. Now, it's not something that he did consciously, but he just, for some reason, wanted to see her again. So, after seeing her once more, she would say, you really like hanging out with me, don't you? And one thing would lead to another, and another thing would lead to another, and Naruto would end up being in his house with Anko, and they would both be subtracting the clothes, adding the bed, multiplying. You know what I mean? They're doing some math homework. You know what I mean? They're 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 going crazy. You know what I mean? They're 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 doing their thing. You know what I mean? And Naruto, once he's done, would get a uh, post nut clarity. <laughs> he would get post nut clarity, just being like, "Yo, like, did I really just do all that?" And after this. Anko would just be like, so, you finally woke up? She would start waking up herself as Naruto was like, oh no. Like, I can't fall in love with this girl. Like, it, it can't happen. And from here, Naruto would pretty much ditch Anko. Until finally, Naruto would end up having to have his fight against Neji. Now, Naruto never ends up running into Jiraiya in this version. Because Jiraiya thinks that Naruto uh, either got killed or ran away. Hiruzen just made up a story of how Naruto got killed, how he tried to stop him, but Naruto inevitably ended up just kind of offing himself, you know what I mean? Jiraiya would be pretty angry at Lord Third, saying that how could he have let something like that happen to Minato's son, and he would angrily leave the office. As I said though, what would be happening right now is the fight between Neji and Naruto. Naruto would arrive at the Chunin exams area as he would body flicker into the stadium as Neji would put his hands in his pocket, close his eyes and smirk as he would be walking his way towards the arena. When he would finally arrive, the proctor would say, begin. And before the proctor could even like do that, Neji would immediately rush in at Naruto saying, you're destined to lose. The Hyuga are the most powerful in the village, you know what I mean? And when Naruto hears this, he would think, you're pretty cocky, aren't you? He would proceed to get some distance between himself and Neji as he would say, fire style, 
Fireball Jutsu, blasting a huge fireball at Neji, to which Neji uses the palm rotation jutsu to dodge the, the jutsu that Naruto just shot at him. Naruto would smile, thinking, so, you got some skill on you after all. Naruto would then immediately begin to, like, close his eyes as he would open them and immediately he would show a new determination it's not sage mode it's nothing crazy just know naruto just closed his eyes breathed in and out for a brief second concentrated and blitz right at neji's direction before throwing a punch which neji would catch and when he catches this he would actually try to hit naruto with a couple palms he would strike naruto three times before naruto would gain some distance between them both and say mud wall jutsu as a huge gigantic wall would come between himself and neji and naruto at this point would think you're pretty strong aren't you he would then proceed to create a bunch of shadow clones as he would rush in at Neji's direction, with Neji dismantling all five of the shadow clones, and Naruto saying, You did well against five shadow clones, but let's see how well you do against a hundred. He would immediately summon a hundred shadow clones, and Neji now would start getting more of the more of the picture of like, yeah, this kid is powerful. Now, when this is going down, Naruto would say, I'm gonna end this in one move. However, before he even starts doing that, Neji would start talking more and more smack. See, at first, Naruto was just going to end Neji, you know, knock him out or something like that. But Neji is getting on Naruto's last nerve. And when Naruto and when Neji continues talking and talking, rambling on about how the Hyuga are the greatest, how it's his destiny to win and it's his destiny to lose, Naruto would start losing his temper. As he would say, honestly... You got on my last nerve, kid. He would end up taking his sword out as he would coat it with lightning chakra and immediately proceed to hold that behind him, uh, reverse grip style. He would blitz at Neji's direction at top speeds as Neji just barely finished blocking off the final shadow clone. Naruto at this point would slash at Neji's hands at the tendons, mind you. And Neji's arms, no, not his hands, but his entire arms in its entirety. He slashed at Neji's arms, you know what I mean? Neji's arms would fall in front of him, not like completely falling off, but they would like drop in front of him and he wouldn't be able to move them. Neji would say, what did you do? Using his Byakugan, he would examine his chakra paths and all that and he would see Naruto completely like cut off all of Neji's access to his arms. Neji would be like, what did you do? How did you do this? Fix it! But Naruto would simply smirk and say, maybe if you weren't so cocky, you could have been a ninja for just a couple more years, but you were too arrogant. As he would proceed to immediately create a, a lightning blade and he would pierce it right into Neji's heart. As Neji would cough out blood, look at Naruto, his headband would fall off and Naruto would look at him saying, killing was allowed, right? As you know, Everybody in the stands would just be like horrified, like, yo, like we get killing was allowed, but this was just too far. The, the guy couldn't even fight back anymore. You know what I mean? Naruto at this point would simply say, huh, he chose that fate for himself. Had it been me, the one who died, I bet none of you guys would pay even a single mind. From here, Naruto would make his way back towards the top as he would then watch as Gara versus Sasuke would go down. Sasuke would end up pulling out the, the Chidori, piercing into Gara, causing Gara to lose his lose his mind and then proceed to run into the forest. Now, I'd like to say that things would go slightly different, but seeing as this time Sasuke would run into the village by himself, uh, Sai would actually end up coming with him and Kakashi would as well, leading to more civilian casualties in this version of events seeing as Kakashi and Guy won't be the two people guarding the civilians. As this is happening, however, in the midst of all the chaos, Naruto would use his body flicker jutsu to appear right behind, no, right beside the supposed Kage for the Sand Village, Orochimaru. As out of nowhere, Orochimaru would pretty much bait Hiruzen into going to the top of the building, and this is where they would have their grand fight. The four, the four, four-sided uh, box that that the Sound Four created would be put up. And what would end up happening from here is Naruto would end up pretty much like appearing be beside Orochimaru. As Hiruzen would say, what's the meaning of this? Orochimaru at this point would say, been a long time, Hiruzen. 
Naruto at this point would not be able to wait for Hiruzen and Orochimaru to have their talk as he immediately rushes straight at the Hokage's direction. Hokage would take out his hidden uh, his adamantium staff as he begins to fight against Naruto's sword. Naruto would be using all the genjutsu styles, tactics that he could think of, but Hiruzen would actually be matching his every step. His every like his footwork would start being matched and outpaced by Hiruzen, with Naruto saying, "No, no, 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 no! You're gonna die today, old man." And when Hiruzen hears that, he would say, I've only ever known one person to call me old man, but he's dead. And this boy couldn't possibly be him. Hiruzen at this point would like pretty much uh, thrust his staff right at Naruto's gut, sending him flying away as Orochimaru would say, thank you for giving me the time to pull these this jutsu out. He would immediately take out three coffins and immediately the first and second kages would come out because the the fourth Hokage was not let come out by Hiruzen. He was like, oh nah, like you're not using him against me. And so Hiruzen would actually end up having to fight against Hashirama, uh, Tobi Rama, and Naruto. And at this point, Naruto would decide to whip out his most powerful jutsu, the Lightning Cloak. Now you guys might be like, hey, yo, how did he learn the Lightning Cloak? Like, Zether, stop giving him these abilities. Brody, the lightning cloak is literally just coating yourself in your lightning chakra to speed up your movements and your in your physical strength. I think that someone like Naruto would definitely be able to whip something like this out. And when he would whip this out, Hiruzen would be like, incredible. The speeds that Naruto's moving at would begin to match the first and second Kage's and in terms of Edo Tensei summoning speed, not like their real, like actual top speeds, you know what I mean? But he would be doing pretty well in terms of keeping up with Hiruzen. And Hiruzen would actually start getting on the back foot heavily. Like in the original, he had a fight against two Kage's and he was losing pretty badly. This time he has to fight against two Kage level Shinobis and another one who is pretty much on, on the verge of being a Kage level, you know what I mean? And so Naruto would proceed to pretty much like just rush in with his blade as he would nick Hiruzen in the chest, leaving a pretty huge gash on his chest. And Hiruzen would be like, ah, and from here, Naruto would say, that's not enough suffering for all the years I had to endure. And from here, Naruto would utter, Beast, give me your strength. As he would scream and say, ah! his fangs would begin coming out slightly. His All of his features would become slightly more animalistic. And Naruto's eyes would go to that of a red color, crimson-like. As three tails would appear behind Naruto's body, he would say, finally. Immediately, Naruto would go on all fours as he begins to pounce right at the direction of Hiruzen. Now, Hiruzen seeing this would think, what? And simultaneously, Orochimaru would come out with the Kusanagi blade as he proceeds to, both of them would proceed to start pressing uh, Hiruzen, who at this point would be forced to make a bunch of uh, clone jutsus to stand even the slightest bit of a chance against both of them. At this point, Orochimaru would proceed to stab his blade right into Hiruzen's gut, and as Hiruzen feels the blade inside of himself, he would hold Orochimaru there. Now, it's at this point that uh, Hiruzen would be like, Orochimaru, this is the last. As before, you know, any of that can happen, Naruto would come in and kick Hiruzen away, as he's like, you're not doing that to him. Not today, not ever. And it would be revealed that it was literally nothing but a uh, a clone. Hiruzen at this point would say checkmate boy as he would appear behind Naruto and kick Naruto at these insane speeds that would cause Naruto to get like just, just go flying. And Orochimaru watching this would lick his lips saying that boy is powerful but he let his guard down. As from here, he would simply stand by and watch because Naruto would have told the Orochimaru that he wanted to be the one to do it. And Orochimaru said, you know what, sure. He promised Obito Naruto would be the one to kill him. He never promised to help him though. And so what would end up going down is Orochimaru would pretty much, no, 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 not Orochimaru, but Hiruzen would be standing over Naruto as he would say that it's over. With Naruto saying, no, no, it's not. And Hiruzen at this point, would be like, any last words? And Naruto, at this point, would let the, the chakra of the nine tails fade away as Hiruzen would stab into him and say, no, 
But at this point, Naruto would come in with his, his lightning blade piercing straight into the back of Hiruzen. As he would say, my name is Naruto Uzumaki. It's time you pay, Hiruzen, as he takes out the blade and then proceeds to have Hiruzen bleeding out on the ground in front of him. Naruto at this point would look at Hiruzen as he would say, All those years, the village treated me like an outcast, and you, the only person I had a trust in, let me go. You let me down. You left me to starve. This isn't even enough for all the years of punishment that I had to endure. Your death should be far worse than this, but I guess you just got lucky. As from here, Hiruzen would begin losing a lot of blood, thinking, <laughs> Naruto, he would begin trying to utter something, but before he could, Naruto would say, Don't speak another word to me, you filthy scum, as he stabs and stabs and stabs and stabs and stabs and stabs repeatedly over and over. As soon as his blood would just start splattering all over Naruto's blade and body, Naruto would stand up after having killed the third Hokage, and at this point, Orochimaru would then say, Well done. As he would lick his lips, and he would proceed to simply say, "You were a pretty good, uh, you were a pretty good help, helping hand there." As you know, Orochimaru would say, "Go now." Naruto would proceed to pretty much just like throw all the blood off of himself, and then throw himself on the ground, acting as if he was hurt in the battle. Now, Hidden Leaf Shinobis would arrive, and Naruto would end up telling a fake tale of how. He was pretty much protected by Hiruzen and how he owes his life to the village. That Naruto feels so sorry that he couldn't help Hiruzen. Now, everybody would eat this lie up. Like, they're eating it up, you know what I mean? They're thinking, wow, the Hokage is such a great man. But little do they know, Naruto was the one who literally killed him. So, yeah. After this, however, Naruto would end up reporting to Obito via uh, like the projections and all that stuff, telling him that uh, the third Hokage lost his life and the mission was a complete success. Obito would tell him that he wants him to keep watch on the Hidden Leaf Village for at least one more year. Naruto at this point would end up pay basically joining the Leaf Village and Naruto would normally be like, all right, I, I, I don't want to do this, but you know, Anko's there. So Naruto for the year would end up being a shinobi who actually works alongside Anko for the next year as Jiraiya would actually end up going to find Tsunade who would then become the next Okage and he would have actually had to do this by his own this time. Since Orochimaru didn't lose his arms, he never ended up being like, yo, Tsunade, join me real quick and I'll revive your brother and your lover. So yeah. <sighs> had to drink some water, boys. Anyways, though, um, what would end up happening here is Naruto would stay at the village, and after a whole year of him being with Anko, it becomes pretty clear that Naruto is doing a little bit more than just catching feelings. He's actually starting to forgive the village, which is pretty shocking, something that I'm pretty sure many of you guys were like, are not expecting. But Naruto genuinely begins to, after all this time being in the village and going around these shops, he would say maybe the village isn't that bad but as he's thinking this at this point naruto would be alone at his home anko was out on a mission obito would appear at his window as he would say you're doing just fine as a spy but don't let me catch you starting to forgive this village keep in mind they were the ones who cursed your childhood and we were the ones who saved you from this accursed world the Akatsuki gave you everything, Naruto. Don't abandon your mission. I saved you. You owe me your life. Naruto would think, you're right. I, I won't abandon the mission. It's a promise. He would say, the village will crumble to my knees, just like I promised all those years ago. From here, Obito would say, that's just perfect, because the attack on the village will be happening tomorrow. Naruto's eyes would widen, as from here, Obito would proceed to pretty much have pain come in and use Shinra Tensei to obliterate the village. Wait, is it the Shinra Tensei or the All He would use the Almighty Push, all right? Obliterating the entire village and killing a bunch of people. Kakashi would end up uh, dying to the Diva Path. Mike Guy would actually be out absent on a mission. Conan was still absent as well. 
and the village would start getting obliterated by Naruto alongside the Akatsuki. This version of Naruto now, after one year of extra training in secret, would be able to actually control five of the Tails, uh, Tails uh, Chakra, the Nine Tails. So that would have ended up actually weakening his seal, and this would lead to something very interesting happening. Obito at this point has already literally co collected all the remaining tailed beasts, including, 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 including Killer B. Now, the people who were actually tasked to go get Killer B were Kisame and... No, 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 not Kisame and Itachi. Let's say it was Data Run to Sori, but Killer B was actually able to beat both of them, and they're both dead. Wait, no, 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 no. Data Run's C-Zero Bomb would definitely get the best of Killer B. At least I think. I think. That's just me. Uh, Kakazu and Hidan. Yes, Kakazu and Hidan. They're not really that powerful anyways. Kakazu and Hidan, they, they end up getting clapped by Killer B, and uh yeah, yeah yeah i like that i like that so kakazu and hidan got clapped and obito had to take out killer b himself extracting the eight tails at this point they bring complete annihilation to the hidden leaf village and it's at this point that obito would summon the ghetto statue now as this is all going down naruto would actually be told that it's now time naruto this whole time has known about the fact that sooner or later the Akatsuki would have to extract the tailed beast from Naruto. And Naruto would at this point willingly give his body up to the Akatsuki's purposes. As Naruto would be having the tailed beast extracted from him, there would be about 10 seconds left before Naruto would die. At this point, Naruto would transport himself into his mindscape as he would see a vision of a man, Minato and Kushina. Both of them at this point would hug Naruto telling him that they don't blame him for what happened here and that they're sorry they weren't there to be better parents for him and at this point kurama would pretty much have had the seal weakened so much by the fact that they're extracting it that kurama would say good riddance brat i hope you find comfort in the fact that you're giving your life to the person who took everything away from you it was obito obito killed your parents naruto saying what and from here Minato and Kushina would nod their heads, saying that they'll be together soon and that he shouldn't worry about that stuff. And Naruto would close his eyes as the infinite Tsukuyomi plan would become a success. And Obito would actually end up being the one who becomes Jubidara. It doesn't end up becoming Madara. Obito would use the infinite uh, Tsukuyomi to pretty much cause the entire world to be put under a Genjutsu. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be wrapping up. What if Naruto joined the Akatsuki? If you guys enjoyed today's video, then definitely make sure to leave a like down below as it shows me your support. Comment down any what if suggestions if you guys have any, as well as leave a like on the video. Seeing as you were here for about an hour, you might as well leave your boy a like. And with that being said, that has been it for me today. I love each and every single one of you guys. I'm Zether and I am out. Peace.